Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to show you how you can take your own design from Illustrator or Inkscape or whatever program you like to use to make a nice laser cut part. And the software I'm going to be using is Lightburn. So before I get started with the video, I want to thank Endurance Laser for sponsoring it. They are the ones that sent me that really awesome laser that I mounted to my CR10, which works really nicely. And I used that laser to create the part that I will, I will show you in this video and many others. You can check out my review of the 10 watt endurance laser and the endurance website with the links below. So the first steps to create your own laser cut part are of course on the computer. So let's hop over there and I'll show you in the software. So starting off to make the design, I'm using Adobe Illustrator, but you could also use free software like Inkscape or basically any other software that lets you generate vectors. I'm just the most familiar with Adobe Illustrator and since I have the Creative Cloud package anyways, it doesn't cost me any extra money. So I just designed this simple business card here, imported my logo, added some t text, uh, made this a uh, little like PCB looking thing is here and then I can export this as either a vector or a rasterized image. Since I want to cut out these shapes here inside the letters and also the holes for these PCB thingies, I have created a separate sketch where I just copied this over and then I can export this one as a, ra as a vector file as well and make it easier. You I could also just export it from this file, but I, I found it easier to just copy it over into a, a separate file. So it is easier to export. So the software that I'm using for creating the G-code for my laser is called Lightburn. Now, this isn't a free piece of software. It costs like 40 bucks. At the moment I'm still on the free trial, but I'm pretty sure that I will buy it since compared to the free programs, it just is much more complete. All the things that I'm going to show you can be done in free software as well, but you might have to use different programs for different tasks and manually paste, piece together the G code in the end, which is not a big deal if you're just kind of playing around, but I find it much more convenient in here and 40 bucks isn't that much for a good piece of software. So just a quick overview over the software. Here in the middle, you can see your kind of work surface. Uh, I predefined it as the build plate of the CR10, which I'm using, and that's what gave the size. Then here on the side, there are some rudimentary tools to create some like designs right here in the software. You can create rectangles, you can add text and stuff like that for like really quick, things that will be enough actually and you don't even have to use illustrator or anything like that here on the top you can see uh, the regular options for stuff like importing saving exporting all that good stuff and you can see some alignment options that you can use uh, to align all these for example if i have it here and i want it in the lower corner i can press this button and it's going to align it in the lower corner and let's do that for the other design as well and that way it is nicely aligned with the origin. You can also of course resize all your images in here and you can either resize it with, with, with height and width or by percentages. You can also select which point it's uh, resizing from rotating all the good stuff that you would expect from a good piece of software. Now the colors down here, they aren't just for show, but that's how you basically control which layer these are on. If I quickly hide the image here, then you can see that these are the holes. And if I select the holes here, uh, I can put them to a different layer. And then over here, you can see that it changed which layer these are on. That way you can create multiple things. I can create some more uh, shapes here and by selecting those shapes, I can move them to different layers. And over here, I can assign different uh, cutting parameters to them, different power, sp speed, all that good stuff. And that is basically what I found sets this software apart the most from other free software. 
in most software you can just set one speed for all the things in your design and if you want for example to engrave and cut in the same kind of operation you would have to export two different g-code files and either combine them or run them after each other in here you can very easily do that with different layers and you can also show show them here or not show them and uh, toggle output which is gonna basically not output them when you export the g-code now that we are already talking about uh, different layers here you can see that when you're importing a vector file you can it gets imported as kind of a wireframe view and you can change here the mode either as line which is just gonna cut the outline fill which is gonna fill it in or you can do fill and line which is gonna kind of engrave all, all of it and then create a nice sharp outline then down here you can adjust some of the cut options like how, how many passes you want to go how fast what kind of power and here the material in millimeters is basically when you have a z-axis on your laser cutter like I have I can set the thickness of the material here and then set the focus point of the laser to the bottom of my kind of work surface and then it automatically moves up before cutting uh, to that thickness. This is really convenient as you don't have to refocus the laser every time if you have it just focused to the bottom and you can just set a different thickness if you have different materials that you want to cut. Then if you double click on the layer up here, a window pops up with even more options. You can rename the layer, you can change the same things that you could change over here as well but you can also if you have an air assist that is controlled turn it on and off here and some int interesting things down here as well and the most interesting thing is if you're doing multiple passes let's say I was doing maybe four passes because this is a like thicker part then I can assign a step down here and on a CO2 laser that doesn't matter a lot, but on a diode laser your, your focal point is a very small area. So by assigning a step down, after each pass it's going to step down by this many millimeters and thereby also shift the focus point, point down a bit. And that's going to allow you to cut much more effectively. Let's go back to one cut though and take a look at the image. Now normally I would probably want to export this as a vector so that it is even sharper for but for this demo I exported it as a PNG with a relatively high DPI uh, so that we can look at some of the image options. So I'm gonna skip all the options down here and actually double click right away as you have all the same options here. But what you can do here under image mode there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can approach the image. This is just a black and white image where you have just full black and full white. So threshold is probably the best. This is going to engrave either full black or just full white. But if you have a more complicated image or maybe just a photo, then you want to look at some of the other ones here. One good one if your laser doesn't support PWM or you haven't really set up it very finely, then Dither is really good. This is basically going to make it pointed and so that the dark parts have more dense points and the light parts have finer points. This is going to result in a very convincing looking grayscale effect. And if you are properly set up and you have dialed in the PWM then you can choose grayscale down here. And this also unlocks minimum power up here which is basically going to modulate the power for minimum power zero here for the white parts and the maximum power for the black parts and everything in between. You could also set minimum power to something like five if you want to even cut the white parts. There are also some more options down here like the line interval which is basically how many lines it's gonna do. Uh, for very sharp uh, text and stuff you want to set that to 0.1 millimeters as that is the thickness of the laser at the thinnest point as well. But if you're just going faster and you don't care about the highest level of detail you can set your laser slightly out of focus and bump that up to like 0.15 or even 0.2 millimeter. The scan angle here is basically going to change the direction that it scans in so you can just use that if for whatever reason you don't want to go in the x-axis. 
And once you have your, all your settings dialed in, you don't want to just lose them again for the next project. So what you can do down here in the library is save your presets. You can just on your on the layer that you want to save, cr say here create new from layer, and that's going to create a new entry into the library with all these settings. So the material name here is going to be your category basically here, and you can have multiple uh, profiles with the same material name, and then it's just going to group them in here. For something like an image. The thickness is not really a good idea to apply, but for cutting, you will probably want to define your thickness here as you will have different amount of passes or different power for different thicknesses of your material. And down here, the description is the name for this specific profile. So let's say we make a new material here, and that is the, the tutorial material, and we have the and image engrave as the name, no thickness. Then here it's gonna create a new material tutorial and all the ones that don't have a thickness are categorized under minus one. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. And image engrave here. And then when I change the settings here for whatever reason, maybe do more passes, mess it all up, then I can select this one and assign to layer, which is then gonna assign the profile that I just saved. I can also just say edit them and save them down here very nicely. One thing you have to keep in mind though is that these profiles can only be applied to the same kind of layer. This is an image profile so I can only apply it to an image. If we have a line here I cannot assign it to this line. Even when I'm in fill mode which is basically also going to engrave I can't assign it. So you have to save different profiles for your different kinds of modes. Then finally down here you can control the, your laser directly if you have co it connected to the PC that you're using for, for the software or you can just simply hit save G-code here which is going to export the G-code into a file that you can then use on your printer or whatever you're using to control your laser. One last thing that is important to note is down here under devices you can change what kind of controller you're using. If you click here on create manually you can see that they offer quite a range of different uh, controllers. Uh, very popular things like Gerbil, Marlin if you're converting a 3D printer or smoothieware or some others as well. That way you're going to be getting going with the correct g-code right away. Another thing that I forgot to mention is by either going up here to, to tools, preview or hitting alt p you can actually get a preview of what your laser is going to cut. That is really handy to kind of check if your settings are correct and how it's going to look. So the red ones here are just moves where it's going to move in the air and not cut and the black ones are cut. So you can also go down here which is going to give you a timeline of how it goes through and that is nice to just kind of check uh, if it works like you want it. Now the time estimate down here is only a very rough idea uh, since it doesn't properly factor in acceleration so your actual cutting time will probably be longer as the estimate. And that's mostly already it with Lightburn. It's relatively easy to use uh, but also very very powerful with the layers. You can really create some complicated cuts. There are also patterning features over here if you want to create a more batch-like workflow. And with the G-code exported from Lightburn, I just drag it over to Octoprint, which I'm using to control my 3D printer where I have my laser mounted. And then the 10 watt endurance laser is gonna do its job and cut out this beautiful part, like you can see here. And I think it came out really nicely. The laser has no problem cutting through the, this material at all. Uh, the material I'm using is two sheets of veneer glued on top of each other so the grain is opposite to each other which creates a lot stronger part and cr creates a business card that isn't gonna break very easily. Now, of course it is also a little bit thicker but this is more of a novelty item anyway so I don't really care that much about that. So that's it for this video. If you liked it please leave a like down below. Also make sure to check out Endurance Lasers, down, link down below as well. And if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff, link down below. So thanks for watching and until next time.